Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have this Tudor which is, you see, not in good shape and uh, you will see quite a lot. I bought this project and uh, yeah, there is quite a lot of issue with it. Uh, we can see first it looks like it's not uh, the original case. But the watch is working, the Ooh, la, wow, it's moving a lot inside. Yeah, that's not normal. And it came with the case and uh, you see this case is in very rough shape. And, and it's actually the original case, the, the Rolex case, because yet you don't use Rolex case. You see this, uh, the original one was in very rough shape, so we will polish it and give it a, a new look. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to try to rebuild this watch uh, and uh, do it like it was at the uh, fully original, with the original case, and uh, put the dial, obviously, and you see the caliber, which is working, but very dirty. And you see the result on a time grapher, like the amplitude is quite low at 200 and it's gaining 127 seconds a day. That's a lot, yeah. So definitely need a service and you can see how dirty it is inside. So what we're going to do first, we're going to fully disassemble this, uh, this watch and this caliber. And look at this beautiful dial. Uh, the Tudor Oyster, you see this is a model with the big rose logo on top gonna remove the hand there but the hour hand is very low on a dial sitting very low so just gonna use a pair of lever there just to slide underneath you see just lift it up yeah love the dial with this patina on it found it very unique and very beautiful just gonna remove the dial now and just put it in his box we just stay nice and center. I will not move in this box, so yeah. And now we're just gonna start disassembling the caliber and you can see like very, very dirty again, like I said, so definitely need the service. We see if there is anything uh, wrong with the, with the movement. The movement is working, so should not be any big surprises inside, but we never we never know when we open a watch. And you will see we'll have a few surprises with it. Wow, well, the watch just stopped. Like, I removed the power and the watch just stopped very quickly, which means that there is a lot of friction inside the, the movement, which is not good for a watch. You want to have, like, uh, the least friction as possible. Just going to remove now the pallet for cock. With the pallet fork, you can see the Tudor 17 rubies on the, which is written there on the caliber. And rubies actually, you see this uh, pink, violet, uh, round stuff that you can see, or not necessarily round, but, and which is actually a pivot point. A ruby is very, very hard. It's almost like a, a diamond, like if you want in terms of uh, hardness. And it prevents like the parts from wearing when they move between each other. So it does a very good like a pivot surface if you want and this uh, this watch as you can see has 17 rubies so we have rubies as well on the pallet fork and the impulse drill on the balance wheel we see uh, a bit later just removing the bridge there what we find underneath the barrel assembly Just re going to remove this cap jewel there, which is on the top from the for the escape wheel. Obviously, all this part we get cleaned separately. We we'll see later on in a cleaning machine. And yeah, you see the movement like it's like a layer of dirt, or like it's it's not very shiny. Like it's like uh, I don't know. It looks like there is I don't know if it's a layer of maybe like got some moisture in it or some water. I don't know, but it looks like. It looks like different, like it's not very shiny. It looks very matte. Just removing the train of wheel now and just checking every, every time if there is anything wrong with the wheels. And on this one, you have a, an intermediate bridge. But we'll have the center wheel, you see, with a jewel there, which is actually, you see, stuck like so. A sign most of the time that there is some dried up uh, oil or grease and the parts stick to each other and that's not good again like I said the friction is your enemy in a watch and uh, yeah 
old oil or old grease. Actually, instead of uh, lubricating the the movement, it creates friction when they when they dry it up. We move to the dial side, and we're gonna disassemble the keyless work now. Pretty simple on this side, and actually there there is something wrong. I'm not gonna tell you. We'll see a bit later. Uh, what's wrong with uh, with this part of the movement? But yeah, there is a, there is an issue there. Just gonna remove the yoke spring here. And again, you see on this side as well, caliber is quite dirty. Yeah. Just releasing with the setting lever screw there, the setting lever. And only in the last uh, few parts stay in a, in a caliber. So it's a pretty simple caliber, like uh, no complication, no date, no winding mechanism, which are like the most common simple uh, complication that you find on a watch. This one is pretty simple, so just removing again the jewel there that we will clean separately. And we have the shock spring on this uh, Tudor mechanism, which I really like. It's kind of clover shape that you need to do a quarter of a turn and you can lift it up. We are grabbing like with a bit of Rodico. We are grabbing, you see, the cap jewel and the chaton. Just gonna peg the jewel there with a piece of wood, just to make sure again we remove, if there is like a lot of dried up oil or grease, just remove the, the big part of it. And uh, obviously we'll get clean, we'll finish to get clean in a cleaning machine. Just place back the balance on the main plate there. And again, this uh, spring here, which are pretty nice. Just try to find, here we go, find the groove there just to open it. Okay, we're gonna open now the barrel assembly. You see as well, quite dirty this one. Just gonna remove, wow, that's uh, dirty as well. So gonna remove the mainspring. Just like you see, removing the mainspring by turning it. And when it's out, just gonna do a, a polish on the pivot point there again, just to remove like the, if there is any dried up oil or grease on a pivot point. And there I'm doing a, a quick polish with some E-Flex on the barrel and the plate. You see that just to have like very shiny and no, no uh, scratches at all on the pivot point here. Again, because if you have some scratches, it will uh, increase the friction, so you want a very smooth surface. So that's why I do a quick polish of uh, all the pivot points there where you don't have a jewel. It will help for uh, the amplitude a bit later on. Okay, so now you see like all the parts on the bench, most of the parts. Gonna put them in baskets and they will go inside my cleaning machine. And again, like I said, this one is a pretty simple movement. Not a lot of parts compared to a, like a more complicated watch. You cannot do like uh, simpler than this. And that I will put them inside my vintage Elma cleaning machine where we do a cleaning first, two rinsing uh, in a, through a solution and we'll finish by drying the parts. I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page uh, so if you want to support the channel, you will find the link down below in the description of the video. Find the link of my Patreon page, you can go there. And if you want to join my Patreon account and support the channel, that will help me a lot. So thanks in advance and I would like to thank all my current patrons which are supporting the channel. So if you want to join the group, please go ahead. And as well, if you did not subscribe to the channel, you can go and click on the subscribe button. I try to put a video once a week. You can click on a thumbs up if you like the video, that will help a lot to promote the video. And uh, as well, you can click on a bell icon, you get a reminder every time I put a video on a channel. Okay, so now that the parlor are clean, we're gonna 
treat a couple of parts, few parts in uh, in epilam. Uh, this is not a step which is uh, necessary if you just start this as a hobby. Um, but yeah, it will help the oil to be retained on the surface. It will be easier to oil and as far it will be more efficient as well because the oil or the grease will stay in a position where you put it. Just going to dry it now. I'm removing the epilam from the pivot point of the pallet fork and the escape wheel. And now you see I'm starting to oil the jewel there, the capstone, so just a drop of oil right in the center. Just put the chaton back on top. And that we need to do it two times because obviously we have two shocks sitting on a balance wheel, one at the top and one at the bottom. So I'm gonna do the second one exactly the same way. Put in a, a drop of 9010 right in the center. And the chaton which goes back on top there. So in this oil, what I like to do, I like to put them back on a balance wheel. You see this one with this uh, shock protection system on top there that I need to close. Just now you see very gently trying to do a quarter of a turn to, to close this spring on top there. There we go. And when it's done after, so I just put this jewel there back in position so like that is done. And what I like to do when I put the, the jewels back in position on a balance wheel, I like to check if the air spring is fully flat. For this I'm brewing a bit of air, checking if it's flat, if it's flat, fully concentric, yeah. And it looks good on this one. It's in good shape. So like that I know the balance is fully functional. We have another cap jewel there. And this cap jewel, I will oil them uh, underneath with uh, automatic oiler. You see there, you see my automatic oiler. We do the same on the one which is on the main plate. And so on a barrel assembly, I decided to put a new mainspring because obviously the old one, we saw the amplitude was not that high. And uh, actually this watch will be for sale on my web website. I will talk to you a bit, uh, we talk to it a bit uh, later. And uh, this watch, yeah, I want it to be in uh, best condition as possible because obviously uh, maybe one of you will buy this watch and uh, I want this watch to, to, to run very well for, for you guys. So that's why I decided to put a brand new mainspring inside just to be safe and to be sure that the watch will run the best we can. Just closing now the barrel assembly. And I will oil, obviously, you see there's the barrel arbor using my automatic oiler again. Perfect. So we're going to put back now the parts. Reassembling the watch and you will see me putting oils like in different points or grease. Again, just like I said at the beginning, just to make sure we reduce the friction and the parts will not get damaged as well. If there is oil, they will not wear as quick as uh, if there was no oil between the parts. Placing back the train of wheel. Putting some oil there you see on the center wheel that will go through here, right here. Perfect. And now I just put back the bridge, you see with the jewels on top and we're gonna align all the pivot points. So there you need to be very gentle because 
you don't want to bend or you don't want to damage a pivot point on a wheel. So you don't need to use any uh, strength at all, just a gentle pressure on a bridge. And you will move the wheel until everything fall into, into the jewel, into the hole there. And when it does, you will see all the wheel will turn together like this. Perfect. You see, when I'm turning the wheel, all of them are turning. So now I can secure everything with a screw. Just gonna play there the setting lever screw, which has a shoulder. So just need to make sure you put it before we place the bridge later on. This is the bridge that I was talking about that I'm putting in right now. And I'm placing the screw there. And you see the movement now after uh, after cleaning, obviously it's much, much brighter. Uh, obviously you don't see like all the dirt like and dust I was uh, on the on on the caliber when we opened the watch. And as well, it's, uh, yeah, it's shinier than it was when it came. So that's why it's important like to do a clean because all of these little uh, particles that you have from dust or dirt, like it will go inside uh, for example, the train of wheel or between parts, it can jam a caliber or it can damage some part because like, imagine that if you have sand uh, in between parts, obviously it will grind the the parts and it will damage them uh, for sure on a, on a long run. So that's why yeah, it's important to to do a service on your watch as well and to make sure that your watch as well is watertight for the water obviously, but as well for the dirt because you don't want any dirt to come inside your movement. And this one, this watch, is uh, come in a, this vintage Tudor actually, which is part of the Rolex group even before. Uh, and it was, uh, if you want the cheaper version of Rolex before. So they had Rolex case and they had the Oyster case, which is for Rolex and Oyster case. Uh, it's a waterproof case, okay? Um, and so if it's waterproof, obviously water cannot go in, but as well, dust and dirt cannot go in. And you saw this watch, obviously was not in the Oyster's original case, or the case, but the case where it was, it was not fully watertight because you, you see the amount of uh, dirt and dust that was inside, that's not normal at all. So that's why you need to maintain your watch and make sure they get watertight because, yeah, obviously water and rust are terrible, but even like uh, dust or particle for, for mechanical movement is very bad, yeah. Okay, so I put as well a new uh, setting, uh, a new setting lever there, a new stem, sorry, with a new crown, uh, because the crown we saw it was not the original crown as well. So I just bought the a Rolex crown, which is again like it's uh, an oyster caliber, uh, oyster case on this uh, vintage Tudor, and they come with the Rolex crown as well and the Rolex ceiling, which is a, a very good ceiling way of ceiling even on this uh, oyster case. So you see the, the stem is very long and we will adjust it a bit later on at the end. And you see me using this blue grease, which is an uh, heavy grid there. Because this part we see a lot of tension in between each other, a lot of friction. So we are using like a higher viscosity. And there, actually, I'm doing a mistake. We see a bit later on. Uh, I'm doing something wrong. I don't know if you can notice, but you will you will get the answer in a few minutes. Yeah. Just putting the yoke spring in position. There we go. Perfect. And now I'm putting the cannon pinion, which is friction mounted. There we go. Just gonna do a break on the caliber because actually uh, 
It was an issue I told you earlier, and uh, I need a part we see later on. And I'm just going to focus on a case, the original case, which is a Rolex case, not the one the watch came in or the caliber came in. So I'm going to do, going to give a, a new look to this uh, case, which is pretty rough. Um, so yeah, it looks like all the parts are there. And you see, we still have the old O-ring inside, which are very dry and very hard to remove. Just try to remove them. Very, very difficult. And the tube as well on this watch is pretty worn out. And uh, yeah, you will see later on. Actually, I couldn't remove with the, you see the tool that I have on a bench. That's not normally to remove the crown, uh, the, the, the tube, sorry. And uh, yeah, this tube has no teeth in it. So I had to find another way to remove the tube. First, I'm going to remove the bezel using this tool you see there. Just going to press just going to go in between the case and the bezel and just going to lift the bezel up. There we go. Now I've just finished to remove the bezel. And you can see underneath, so very dirty as well so i will remove most of the grime that there is there dust dirt and uh, we will finish to clean that as well in the ultrasonic machine a bit later on and you see there to remove the tube i'm just going to use this uh, vice clamp here and it actually the tube is screwed inside the case and now I'm going to put all the parts inside the ultrasonic machine. So this ultrasonic machine, actually, I have a discount card for you. If you want to buy it, I will put a link down below in the description of the video. It's a great ultrasonic machine if you want to clean some bracelet or some parts. And so now I'm going to polish all the parts uh, from, from the case, starting by the bezel. And you see I'm using this tool, which normally should turn there. It just struggle to start a bit so I'm doing a, a first step there with uh, a wheel which is to remove like uh, deeper scratches and you see me using a blue compound there to uh, to remove the scratch and I'm using this tool which is turning it just to make sure I don't do any flat uh, spots on uh, cylindrical or like uh, parts I need to need to turn and just do the same thing on a case back there and actually on a case back there was quite some deep scratches so I cannot remove all the deep one or else I will remove the marking on the back of the case back just do the same on the case as well polishing the lugs polishing the case so this is the first step then I will put all the parts inside the ultrasonic machine again just to remove the polishing compound and uh, what we will do next we will do uh, the last pass the finish which I'm using a cotton wheel there you see with some green compound polishing compound there and I will just redo the same parts and uh, to give them the shiny look so the bezel we just do the same with this polishing with this special tool there just to make sure I don't do any flat spot we do the case back just to give the nice mirror finish on the parts. And the case, polishing everything. Again, after that, we put everything in the ultrasonic machine just to remove the polish compound. And the last, uh, last step that we need to do, I'm just gonna do a matte finish on the top of the lug which is like the original finish a brush a brush finish so for this i'm using a special wheel just on each lug to do the finish on top just need to be very precise and very gentle with this okay so now we go back on the movement and uh, yeah actually there was i don't know if you noticed when i disassembled the movement but it was a broken part the setting lever 
uh, spring was broken. You can see the difference. This is the same parts, and you can see it's missing this long arm. Uh, it was actually broken. So that's why I had to wait for the part. And now you can see, put it, can put it back on top. Secure it with the screw there. And actually this long arm, which is acting as a spring, which I'm arming right now, it gives a two position for when you do uh, winding and time setting. You see it has two, like if you want two holes inside the spring. And now when I pull on it, actually it doesn't work. Like it doesn't, doesn't go to the next position. And this is because I put the yoke like the other way around. Like, uh, so I had to turn it, place back the spring. And again, something wrong. Like it doesn't work very well. Like uh, the clutch is not moving like it should when I turn. It, the parts doesn't turn. And you see, it went out of the clutch. The yoke was not inside the clutch, which need to be. So you will see me putting it back there. To be careful with the spring here which goes underneath you just need to put it on the side and here we go now the yoke is in the middle of the clutch and that's it now it's moving perfectly here perfect just can reassemble the rest of the keyless work it's a minute wheel we have an intermediate wheel there. Okay, we're gonna put the screws and we are done with the yoke assembly there. The keyless work, sorry. So the keyless work is done. We can move to the other side. We're going to put the pallet fork in position. The pallet fork cogs that go. We need to align. Again, we need to align the jewels. Up. Oh, yeah, you see it just drop here. Yeah. We can see the pivot point which is inside the jewel. Off camera there, I will uh, oil the pallet fork. Very tricky to do. And I just put a bit of a wind. Just checking everything is working. And when it does, I will put the balance. Remember the balance wheel. We already oil all the jewels, top and bottom. You see the input jewel there that will come in a pallet fork. And let's check if the watch want to start. Yes. Oh, it did not go. Perfect. You see, just the quick move there and the movement just started. We can secure it with a screw. And that's it. We have a clean caliber running so we can uh, focus on the next step, which is I'm just going to do a quick clean on a dial uh, because obviously I love this patina and uh, if you want to remove this patina you need to uh, refurbish a dial which I really don't like because you want to keep it original and vintage so there I'm just going to do a, a quick clean on the dial just to remove any any dirt very light and you see me rolling on top of the dial and not like scratching because yeah, I don't want to damage so I just do a quick roll There we go. Beautiful dial. I love the patina. It makes it very original. And uh, the marking on it, like the writing is impeccable. And uh, yeah, it looks wonderful. Just do a light clean there on uh, our indicators. Okay, I'm just gonna do a, a quick polish on the hand there. Again, just to make them a bit more shiny, to remove like the dull surface there to re to give it a bit more shine. 
just gonna do the same thing obviously on all three hands that's uh, our hand now we just do it on uh, minute end obviously and the last one will be the the second hand which is actually different compared to the other you can see it has a, a blue finish on it which is very nice it's not like the silver finish give a, a contrast to the watch yeah. okay just gonna put the our wheel back on top here with the dial spring and now we have the clean dial that we can place back on a caliber just gonna align it and screw it in with the dial fit screw just to make sure it doesn't move anymore and stay in position against the caliber okay I'm just gonna put uh, the hand store starting with the hour hand we'll uh, place in position you see like from up close a beautiful dial it's very unique finish like that's what I like about vintage watches because yeah they are unique like with time some of them will age differently and I always find it a shame where you when you try to uh, on a vintage watch you can clean them uh, polish them a bit but yeah it's a shame just to remove like uh, the mark of times on uh, on on a watch, uh, just keep uh, yeah. If you try to remove the history basically of the watch, I like I like I like it because yeah, it makes them very unique. Okay, so the hour hand and minute hand are are on, and you can see you're just checking the alignment, which looks good. And uh, now the second hand going in position. And now I'm using the tool to put the tube. Because I'm putting a, a brand new tu tube there on the on the case, you will see I'm using some uh, green Loctite there, which is specially for threads. And I'm just gonna place it back on the case. You see, using this tool, perfect. Brand new crystal because we saw the original crystal was broken and in very very bad shape. So managed to find uh, a crystal that go for this watch. Just gonna blow in some hair there just to remove any any dust. I'm just gonna use my uh, custom press from Orotech there just to press the bezel uh, on the side of the crystal to make sure the crystal stay in position perfect just gonna use there the vacuum just to remove some dust Okay, and so now I'm gonna put some uh, O-rings and seals on the watch. Obviously, like I said, being an oyster case is uh, watertight. So I'm gonna put brand new seals and brand new ring on his watch. Again, make sure no moist, no water get inside or no dirt get inside this uh, beautiful watch. So the first one goes in the tube there. One goes at the bottom of the crown. And obviously the last one, which is a big one, will go on a case back. And this is exactly the same way as it's done on the, the Datejust, the vintage Datejust is exactly the same case and the same way of sealing. Just a last vacuum inside just to remove any dust or dirt before we put the dial inside again we just blow some air just to remove any dust on it wow look oh it's beautiful like in this uh, polish case 
just put the ring around just to make sure like the caliber stay nice and centered inside the case. Putting the windings and you can see uh, I need to adjust it obviously it's way too long. So there I'm gonna measure the distance between the crown and the tube. Just gonna mark the, the distance that I just measure on the stem here. Just gonna cut it at the mark exactly. I put, just gonna file the end just to make a, a flat surface. So it would make, make it easier to screw it back inside the, inside the crown. Just gonna check first and when it's okay, obviously after I will put some uh, Loctite. And when it's position, I can lock. Okay, so now I just close the case back. Again, I have some custom tool from Rotec. You can find a link down below in the description if you wanna buy them. They are great tools and uh, very nice as well to have on a shelf. I will demagnetize the watch and I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have my own website. So actually this watch, I will put the link down uh, on the top right corner. This watch will be for sale. So you can go into my vintage sec section and you will see uh, a lot of watch that I restored on the channel, which are up for sale. And as well, if you want to send me your watch for a service, you can go there and contact me on my website. I would be very happy to help you with your project. Okay, and so now I put the watch on a time grapher and you can see the amplitude is very high at 287 degrees. Very happy with that. The bit error is a bit too high, so I will adjust it uh, to make it below one. And you see the watch is just gaining a few seconds a day, uh, which is perfect. Lovely watch. Look at this beautiful watch on my wrist. Uh, I love this vintage door. So I hope you like this restoration and I see you for my next project. Bye bye.